So devotion is not just bliss. It's not just overwhelming love where you just sit there and you can't move and the awe and the wonder and the gratitude of what's coming. Devotion is a way to live. It's the way to serve. It's the way of being an agency for those moments that have come to you. You can choose not to, but then you miss the richness and the depths and the fullness of what it is that you are in truth, this life, as you. You miss the opportunities of creating a new, a new way to be. So don't do that. Or stop doing that. Get useful. Put your butt in gear. Do the thing you know needs to be done. The Gita says, constant union with me, unswerving devotion to me, an intense liking for solitude and distaste for companionship with material-minded people, constancy, consistency, constancy in the pursuit of spiritual knowledge and accepting God-realization as the supreme truth of life. All these are said to be conducive to true knowledge. All that is contrary to this is called ignorance. The secret of all secrets in the Gita, be devoted to me, think of me always. Devotion empowers devotion. Devotion begats devotion. Suspicion, distrust, begats suspicion and distrust. And we're the ones who do that. Which are we feeding? What are we attending to or making an issue about? What are we validating or making real? We have to be in this poised position, attending to the parts of ourselves that are not yet on board. And also to rest in the resource of devotion, in the recognition of how you have lived your life to be here is evidence of the alignment of the divine forces in you that have brought you to this place where devotion can be immediately possible, can be directly recognized, and can be felt in your own experience. The more you choose to align with that which you've actually devoted to, the more you become that. You become the object of that devotion. You become a sacred being, a human and spiritual being. And everything that you are can now change. Even your physical body, your nervous system, your biochemistry can change when you align your consciousness in this way. The mother book speaks of devotion beautifully. It's all about devotion, in fact. It takes that one aspect and then gives knowledge to it and action. Most of all, one who is her personality of that mysterious and powerful ecstasy in Ananda that flows from a supreme divine love. The Ananda that alone can heal the gulf between the highest heights of the supermental spirit and the lowest abyss of matter. The Ananda that holds the key of a wonderful divinitous life and even now supports from its secrecies the works of all the other powers of the universe. If you desire this transformation, put yourself in the hands of the mother and her powers without cavil or resistance. 
and let her do unhindered her work within you. But three things you must have. Consciousness, placidity, and unreserved surrender. For you must be conscious in your mind and soul and heart and life and the very cells of your body, aware of the mother and her powers and their working. For although she can and does work in you, even in your obscurities and your unconscious parts and moments, it is not the same thing as when you are in awakened and living communion with her. So that's all that can be said about devotion this time. That's my revelation for today. This is the task before you. This is the work you're already doing. I'm just empowering you to recognize what is already so. And to have you turn your attention to that divine quality that you're becoming. To recognize that same divinity you're devoted to lives within you.